Chapter 7 Sloan. The quiet solitude of the office envelops me when I slip inside. It's not always quiet. Some mornings the phone rings incessantly, and other mornings there are students complaining or asking questions for 10 to 15 minutes nonstop. But this morning it is blissfully silent. After the chatter in the halls, the silence is golden. Good morning, Sloane, Miss Strickland says as I enter. She's the secretary and one of the cooler adults on campus, but maybe that's because she's not a teacher. Still, she dresses younger than most of the other adults, and she's up on the latest lingo and TV shows. So, she's pretty chill. I don't actually have room in my schedule for a TA period, but because I wanted the occupational credit, The counselor said if I checked in when I could and helped out where I could, then I could still earn it. Miss Strickland always has something for me to do. Morning, Miss Strickland. Files? Filing is my normal morning routine. I had no idea schools had to keep records for so long, and though most of it is on the computer now, there are still some items that have to be kept on paper just in case. For a little bit, but I have a new student arriving today and I need you to show her around. And just like that, the tranquility of the moment shatters. Babysitting is my least favorite duty, but I always get stuck with it anyway. And transfer students are the worst. We've only had a few, but they've all fallen into one of two camps. The angry ones are mad they're at our school and they either give me the silent treatment or attach a glare to every word they snarl. They're annoying, but at least they generally leave me alone once they find their classes. The other camp is worse. I call them the scared rabbit camp. They come in with wide eyes and clingy natures, and because I'm the one who usually shows them around, they decide I should be their best friend, and they follow me everywhere. I don't do clingy, so I usually end up blowing up at them and then feel guilty afterwards. Thankfully, we don't get that many. Wolfworth, Texas isn't known for getting a ton of new students during the year. I've just started the filing when I hear Miss Strickland speak again. Can I help you? I'm Brett Green, new student. I sigh. That's my cue. Shutting the file drawer, I grab my bag and wait for Miss Strickland to call me. I could just walk out, but there's a part of me that's hoping the girl won't want a guide or that Miss Strickland will change her mind. Welcome, Brett. We were expecting you. Are you familiar with friendship? I hear the tapping of her computer keys and then the printer whirring to life. Not especially. I was hoping I could get a map along with my schedule. I've got a map for you, but also something better. Sloane, I step out and size up the new girl, who is dressed head to toe in black. She looks like the stereotypical goth girl, except that she's not wearing black makeup. Her face is actually light and fresh, creating a weird dichotomy. Maybe she's not allowed to wear makeup? Regardless, we don't have a lot of goth people here. This should be interesting. I'd like you to show our new student Brett around. Before I can even respond, the girl rounds the corner, her hand out and a wide smile on her face. Hi, I'm Brett. Nice to meet you. I glance down at her hand, but it's the popping of her gum that draws my attention. It's like an anathema to her emo look. So, maybe not goth. I shake her hand. Her black nail polish only confuses me more. Sloan, her eyes light up. Oh my gosh, you have a name like mine. I thought I was the only one. Did your parents want a boy too? That's how I ended up with Brett. At first I hated it because it sounded so boyish, but now that I've found theater, I think it's pretty perfect. It reminds me of Rhett Butler and it's so unusual for a girl, don't you think? I don't think I've ever heard anyone speak so quickly, and certainly not here in Texas, so it takes me a minute to catch up. Yeah, I guess so. 
She chuckles, and the sound is so different from her look. It's light and melodious. It's like trying to picture a goth fairy, which doesn't work. No, this girl is too bubbly and smiley to be goth or emo. She must just really like the color black. I think we are going to be great friends, Sloane. With that, she links her arm through mine. Through mine, like we are bosom buddies or something. And leads me out of the office. I thought I was supposed to be showing her around, but Brett is a force to be reckoned with. So what's your first class? She glances down at her schedule. I hope it's chemistry with me. Science isn't my strong suit, and I could use someone to talk to in my class. I was going to take chemistry at my last school, but everyone in there was kind of boring. They were either the super jocks who realized they hadn't taken it already, Or the uber smart kids. Is that how it is here? I should have taken it as a freshman, but I really don't like the idea of chemicals spilling on me. Do you know the teacher actually said that if you spill chemicals on you, that you have to strip even if other people are still in the room? We're walking down the hall, still arm in arm and garnering looks from people who pass us, but Brett does not seem to care. I think that's pretty common, I say answering the last question she posed and wondering how she doesn't notice the gazes of various stragglers left in the halls. Maybe she's just immune to them. Unless you like being covered with dangerous chemicals, I add under my breath. Yeah, but there were cute guys in the class. I mean, I wouldn't date the jocks, but they're still good looking. So there was no way I was stripping in front of them. Plus, whoever built my old school was dumb. There was no drain in the room. The teacher said if you had to use the wash station, then you had to clean up the mess afterward. Can you imagine having to strip naked in front of classmates and then mop up the floor? The humiliation would follow you forever. Do you always talk this fast? I am amazed at the speed words fly out of her mouth. It's kind of like trying to follow a pinball when it really gets going. And the question slips out before it even registers in my brain. Instead of taking offense, though, Brett simply laughs. Goodness, yes, I moved here from up north, where I'm from, everybody talks this fast. I can't believe how slow people talk here. I keep tapping my foot like, hurry up and spit it out, you know? Don't get me wrong, there are people who talk slowly in Texas. But it's not the whole redneck stereotype it's been made out to be. At least, not in our town. However, everyone speaks slowly compared to Brett. She probably even speeds up her music, and she walks faster than anyone I've met, too. I'm having to double step just to keep up with her. She stops and turns to me, finally releasing my arm. So, is it chemistry? Is what chemistry? Oh, my schedule. She's asking about my schedule again. Right, the original question. We've gone down such a rabbit hole that I nearly forgot she'd asked that question. Yeah, I have chemistry, then algebra, history, drama, English, debate, and Latin. Latin? Brett's brow lifts, and an expression of something between disgust and incredulity covers her face. You can take Latin as a foreign language? You can hear. Latin wasn't my first choice of foreign languages. I mean, why would someone want to learn a dead language? There's no one to even practice it with. But it was my only choice. Spanish and French were both full when I arrived, so Latin it was. Brett scans her schedule. Well, I'm not in Latin, thank goodness. No offense, but that sounds awful. But I am in algebra, history, and drama. That's good, I guess. I'm honestly not sure if it's a good thing or not. Brett is definitely the most interesting person I've met in a while, but I have a feeling she's going to be like glue. The warning bell rings, and this time I pick up the pace. We better hurry up. Mr. Hagar is a beast if you're late. I hate being late, and Mr. Hagar doesn't do excuses, so he won't care that I was showing the new girl around.
The bell rings just as we enter the classroom, but thankfully Mr. Hagar has his back to us. He's older and a little hard of hearing, which also works in our favor. The students, however, are not, and I feel like every eye in the room is on us. This is my worst nightmare. Well, other than the one where I end up at school with no clothes on, that is definitely the worst, and thankfully has never happened. But this is a close second. We scurry quietly to the remaining free desk, but I nearly lose it when she leans closer and asks, Does every athlete in the world wear basketball shorts? Is there some sort of jock dress code that says regular decent pants aren't allowed? I press my lips together and shake my head. Maybe it's because I don't spend a lot of time looking at other people that I've never noticed, but she's right. There are probably 25 other students in the class, and it's easy to see who the jocks are, as every one of them is either wearing a letterman's jacket, even though it is not cold outside yet, or basketball shorts and t-shirts with the school logo on it. It's like athletes think they can't be bothered to wear pants like everyone else in case they have to break out into an impromptu basketball game at lunch or football scrimmage after school. Does that happen here? If it does, I've definitely missed it. But it makes me wonder what it would look like. Who are they? Brett whispers, pulling me back to the present. I follow her gaze and roll my eyes. That is Aaron Richards, star quarterback, and Tyson Miller, his egotistical wide receiver. I'd stay far away from them if I were you. Aaron has a girlfriend who would probably claw any girl's face off who got too close to him, and Tyson is like a doorknob. A what? Her forehead furrows in confusion. A doorknob, you know, everyone gets their turn. Let's just say he's not picky with who he goes out with. Her nose wrinkles in disgust, and she shudders. My thoughts exactly. Maybe Brett isn't so bad after all. Mr. Hagar approaches the front of the room, looking very much like Einstein today. His white hair sticks out in tufts around his head, and his bushy eyebrows are like caterpillars sitting over his eyes. But it's his voice that really makes me cringe. I never watched the whole movie, but I've seen many clips of the monotone teacher from the 80s classic Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and this teacher could rival that actor. Good morning, class. Today we are discussing acid anhydrides. Who can tell me what an anhydride is? Anyone? He pushes his thick glasses up and scans the room, but no one lifts a hand. Then he startles a bit and leans forward. What's this? Do we have a new student? I freeze as his gaze zeroes in on Brett and me, and once again every eye in the class turns to us. The desire to crawl under the desk and disappear is real. I should have known he would notice her, but I hadn't expected he would stop the class and draw attention to the fact. Yes, sir. I'm Brett Green. Just moved here. Ah, you'll need a syllabus then. As he rummages in his desk, Brett leans closer to me and whispers, Oh my gosh, his voice. Is he like this all the time? Unfortunately, chemistry is one of the easier subjects for me, but even I sometimes zone off and find his words sound more like the wah-wah teacher voice from the old Charlie Brown cartoons. You're going to have to poke me to keep me awake some days then she says, with a small shake of her head. Ah, yes, here we are. Mr. Hagar brandishes the found papers, hurries over to drop them on the desk, and then resumes his lecture as if he'd just been paused and restarted. It's going to be a long class.